In this series of Sound Circuits videos, we're going to look at Project 341, the LED and relay, and go up to Project 353, the relay buzzer. So, here is Project 341, the LED and relay. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And then we get this piece in place. So, we're using our S3 switch, which is our relay here. We got six volts because you see our two battery packs in the series here. Our relay is controlled via our slide switch, and then we have our two LEDs, our red and our green, which are going through our 100 ohm resistor here. Now, our relay is in the normally open position, so when the relay is not energized, current is flowing through our battery packs, through our 100 ohm resistor, and through our green LED normally, through this path, as is illustrated on there. Now, when we close the relay, it now switches to this other pass, and now we have the current going in this direction through our red LED, and then up and back. So it disconnects the path for our green LED and connects the path for our red. And again, if we open the relay connection back, well now we've closed the connection back for our green LED. Close the relay, well now we close the connection for the red LED. So, that is how project number 341 works. Now we're going to look at project 342, the manual second seven timer. So here we are, project 342, the manual second seven timer. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And here we're again making use of our relay, but now the relay is being controlled via our NPN transistor, which its base is being fed by our 10,000 ohm resistor there and we have our 470 microfarad capacitor down here and this section is all controlled via our press switch up here so we have our slide switch over here we're going to get 6 volts and our output from the relay is going to our 6 volt lamp so with the circuit on here nothing's going to happen but if we press the press switch our bulb lights up now if we let off the press switch the bulb is going to stay lit up and it will stay that way for several seconds because the capacitor is discharging through the base of our transistor. See now the capacitor discharged enough to turn our light off because the capacitor can no longer supply enough current to the base of our transistor to keep the contacts closed on our relay, keeping our 6 volt lamp on. Of course we could start this over again. We press the press switch, it charges up our capacitor, turns on the transistor which closes our contacts on the relay, turning on our 6 volt lamp and now that once we release the press switch it now discharges through the capacitor through the base and once it gets low enough it can't keep that contact closed and turns the lamp off so that's how project number 342 works now we're going to go on to project 343 the half wave rectifier circuit the area project 343 the half wave rectifier circuit there it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Again, we're making use of our S3, which is our relay, with 6 volts, all turned on and off via our slide switch. And we're using our T1 transformer from the relay's output, going through the short side of its windings. Then on the long windings, which of course means we're stepping the output up on the transformer, we have our 1000 ohm resistor going through our red LED, which is then going up through our meter M2 on its low current setting. So the way this circuit is configured, as you notice from the way the relay is set up, the relay is going to open and close very quickly. It's going to make a squealing sound as those contacts open and close. And by doing that on its output, we're going to produce an on-off output on our transformer here. So we get an alternating current on the output windings, which we'll see with our LED and our meter. So we turn the circuit on. Again, you hear that squealing from the relay as those contacts open and close rapidly. And because of that, we're getting almost 10 milliamps of current on the output side of the transformer here. And you can see our LED is lit up here. And I don't know how the camera is picking it up, but sometimes you can see the LED just briefly flicker a little bit as the sound changes on this relay.
So that's how Project 343 works. Now, Project 344 is the halfway rectifier circuit 2. And all we're going to do with that is take our meter and move it down to the center tap of the output windings of the transformer there. So here we had the full use of these output windings. Now when we connect it to the center tap, well, we're effectively having the amount of current that we can get because we're only using half of the windings, basically from here to here, instead of the full length that we had before. So we turn the circuit on this time. See, our LED still lights up. It may look ever so slightly dimmer, but you notice that the current deflection on our meter has gone down. It's only about six to seven milliamps, and you can see it deflect ever so slightly because of this relay here oscillating that can sort of make it do by touching it a little bit. So that's how Project 344 works. Now Project 345, we're going to put this back up to here, but we're going to take the diode off and replace it with our regular diode. So we're taking the LED off and putting our regular D3 diode across the connection there. And then we're going to pay attention to our meter. As we won't have an LED to see any visual output, we're just going to have a current measurement from our meter. So if we turn the slide switch on now, yeah, it still squeals, but if we look at our meter, it's gone past the 10 point on the scale. And that's because with the regular diode, we don't have as much of a voltage drop as if we were using this because there's more voltage drop lighting the diode from this than just the regular diode there. So we get more current through this circuit. That's why it's deflecting over more. So that's project 345. Now project 346 is current and resistance. So we're still going to have the diode here, but we're now going to increase the resistance by changing out our 1000 ohm resistor for R3, our 5.1K. So we're effectively increasing the resistance by a factor of 5 because this was a 1000 ohm resistor, this is a 5.1K resistor. So turn the circuit on this time. And you see, you see that the current on our meter is showing almost about the same as what the LED had using the center tap windings there, which is around 6, 7, maybe even 8 milliamps of current. So by increasing the resistance here, we've lowered the amount of current in this loop. Now, of course, the book doesn't mention it, but if we put the meter here, just for the sake of things, you see, now we got exactly 5 milliamps. So again, center tap is delivering less current than the outer ones are. So that's how Project 346 is. Now we're going to move on to Project 347, which is the telegraph. So here we are with Project 347, the telegraph. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So again, we got 6 volts being used with our press switch acting as our momentary trigger. And we're feeding the long side of our transformer from all three points. So we've got our C2 and C1 capacitors here. Then they're all connected across the transformer. And then from this, we're actually uh, stepping down with the transformer because we're going from the long windings to the short windings, which goes out to our speaker, which will be our output. And we have our NPN transistor over here with our 100,000 R5 ohm resistor feeding its base and some of these capacitors so we're creating a bit of a resonance there which then goes into our transformer creating that AC or alternating current signal which we get out of our speaker. Now, capacity, I don't know how loud it is because we got, you know, background noise and stuff like that so what I will do is bring the camera right down here to the speaker. So now you should be able to hear the output from the speaker there a lot more clearly with the camera a lot closer to it. And of course the telegraph was used for 
a series of dots and dashes and things like that because that's what the telegraph was used for was early communications across distances so you might you might be familiar with something like this sending out an SOS and everyone should know the three dots, three dashes, three dots, of course, is the typical SOS signal. Bring the camera back up. And it's actually a little higher. Let me bring it down a little closer. There we are. So that's Project 347. Now Project 348 is the mosquito sound. And what we're simply going to do there is change our speaker out for the whistle chip. So Take the speaker out, put the whistle chip in its place. If I can fit it in here, it's getting a little tight. I can't. Uh, a little hard to put the whistle chip in here because the battery box there is in the way. So I kind of have to just jam it in there. So, a little more difficult here, because there's just no room. Yeah, I hope it's connected. So we'll get the whistle chip there now. Let's see if that is actually putting sound out, because it's hard to hear. Yeah. So, it does for that sound. Let's bring the camera back down once again. Get it nice and close to the whistle chip there. So when you press the first switch now, again it's putting out audio but it's really low in volume. So I got the camera so close to it here. But again that's essentially how Project 348 is. Let's come back up. So Project 349 is Mosquito Sound 2. So we're going to go back to having the speaker here better because there's just no room there for that. Put this back in. Real quick here. And then with the whistle chip we're going to connect it across these points here. So we'll just take our whistle chip, stick it on there. Yep, that's B and E. Oops. Well, not those points these points. Yeah, that's better. Because it gives you a different sound when you put it across the capacitor. So I'll bring the camera back down. You see now we get a sound from both our whistle chip and speaker together there. And it's got a slightly different pitch putting it across the C1 capacitor. So that's how Project 349 works. Going back up. And now Project 350 is Mosquito Sound 3. So for that one, we're going to now put it across C2. So for that, we're going to take it off momentarily, put the whistle chip there, and then put C2 on top of it. Now we press the press switch. We get a slightly deeper sound because we're putting it across a slightly higher capacitor. The Airbnb C2, so camera's back down again. Maybe just over a little bit. Now I press the press switch. And now we get a slightly deeper tone coming out of it again because it's having the whistle chip placed across capacitor C2, which has got a higher capacitance than capacitor C1 that we had in the previous project. So that's how 350 works, and then 351 is the touch control mosquito sound. Now the funny thing about it is, again, I think it's another one of Ellen Co's potential typos because it has us replacing this with the photo resistor. So let me take the whistle chip off because it's not needed for that. 
So by using the photoresistor, it's more like a light-controlled mosquito sound, not a touch-controlled mosquito sound. But that's how the book has it. So we press the press switch. So you can hear that the tone from the speaker already sounds very different. Let me bring the uh, camera down. Okay. See, we're changing it a little bit too because the camera casts a bit of a shadow. And we see that as I move around the photoresistor, we change the tone. And if I fully cover it up, it kind of just clicks because it's resonating so slowly there. Let more light in. And it goes faster and faster. So that is project number 351. And now we're going to look at project 352, bulb and relay. So here we have project number 352, the bulb and relay. There it is in the book and there it is on the board. And here we're making use again of our S3 relay switch with our 6 volt lamp on its output along with our slide switch controlling the on off functions and then our press switch is the activation. Now if we turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. The relay does not close its contacts. The bulb does not light up. However, when we press the press switch, the, bulb, the light lights up and it stays on. And the relay stays in its closed position, allowing current to flow through there. Now if we turn the slide switch back off, the relay opens back up. Lamp goes off and it basically resets. Now what have you seen before in the previous Snap Circuits videos that behaves like this? It's probably something called an SCR or Silicon Controlled Rectifier, which is, if I pull it out here, this little guy. What we've seen before is that with an SCR, the item that the SCR is supplying power to does not get powered up until some kind of external trigger is done on it and then once that is, that device stays on as long as there's power flowing through the SCR. And the fact of this, it's pretty much acting in a similar manner because when the power is applied, nothing has been triggered via the press switch yet. And if you see from the way it's wired, the press switch will initially send current through here, which will of course light up the lamp, but also close the contacts of the relay, which then switches it from this normally open point here to this closed point which then connects the other side of the press switch to there and when that happens then current is supplied continuously through there keeping the relay closed and I can see my six volt lamp is looking a little dim which kind of tells me that probably one of these batteries is going to be needing charging soon but you get the idea there is that it keeps that on similar to an SCR once it's been triggered based on how it's wired up here. So that's how project number 352 is. The last one is project 353, the relay buzzer. So here is project 353, the relay buzzer. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. It's pretty simple and if you've seen how this relay is set up from a previous circuit, you'll notice that from the name of the relay buzzer, we have our 6 volts, our slide switch, and then you see that the contacts here, the relay, are connected together. So when we turn our slide switch on, the relay buzzes because we're rapidly closing and opening the contacts on there. See, when we first supply power from the press switch, it supplies power across the contacts here so it closes them which then causes it to switch over to this connection but then there's no power here so then the relay opens back up which then reconnects power here causing it to get re-energized and close the contacts back up which then goes back here with no power opens it back up and this process repeats continuously where it flip-flops opening and closing the contacts now because it's doing that rapidly it generates this buzzing noise 
And if you put your finger on it, you can feel it too. So that is how project number 353 works and that is the end of this set of snap circuits videos.